Some of you might recognize this radio. A couple of you, anyways. This is a Philco 40-217, and this came from Shango 66. Kind of left it, uh, kind of left it where uh, he got it working. And identified there was a bad capacitor for the volume slash power motor controller or motor. Um, so we'll be replacing that capacitor. Here it is, right here. Um, I'm just using a motor run capacitor, 30 microfarad at 370 volts, just what I could find. Um, so we'll get that swapped out. It's a little bit bigger than the original. I could probably figure out a different cap to put in there, but that's just an easy one and it was cheap. So this is going to go to a friend. Um, and actually he's probably going to come and help me work on it because he wants to learn. So that's good. Anytime anybody wants to learn, I'm willing to teach. Uh, we did find a remote control for this. Somebody had commented on Shango's video uh, that they had identified where a remote was. And I went and found it on uh, the website that it was posted to, and I paid a ridiculous purchase price for it. However, this being a complete set and fully restored will be very nice. Um, so we'll get the remote, and we're going to see what, it, what we need to do to get that working. Well... The remote showed up today, and you might as well get a tabletop radio if you were going to have this thing. It it means it, it's business, I'll tell you that. And it's kind of interesting. I was wondering, I couldn't tell from the photos if it, I, I was looking at it on the photos, you know, and it's, it's like, that looks like a rotary phone. Well, you'd be darned if it is, and it's a little bit warped right here. I don't know if I'll be able to do something with that or not. Um, I'm not sure how that got warped. Maybe it's just from age, and I think it's hanging up right there. But So, I wonder how this works. So, let's see. Oh, I see. So, soft. We'll have to fix that. Loud. And then this would dial a station. So, it works like a touchtone or it's not a touchstone, it works like a pulse a pulse tone tele telephone because that's how rotary dials work is pulse tone. So that, I bet that's I bet that's what it is. It's so many pulses. So we do have a schematic for this. I'm hoping that the 30 tube or whatever it is, 30 or 80 tube, I forget, is in, in here. Uh, let's get it open. Okay. So pretty basic looking. Somebody's been in here. I think, I don't know why there was a piece of cardboard in here, maybe for packing. I'm not sure. This is going to be the battery connection, I'm sure. I think it uses, uh, I want to say, 45 or 90 volts or some ridiculous DC voltage, I'm sure. And because it's got to have a B plus, and uh, it uses like 3 volts for the tube. It's like a 3 volt tube, which is easy. As a matter of fact, we can use that Heathkit PS4 uh, to power this, I think. It's got those... Uh, that's like a 400 volt DC power supply that we can use. So interesting, laying this on its side, this seems to work normally. So I don't know if maybe when it's laying horizontally, it it's binding up or something. But we'll service that. We'll get that working. Now this is interesting. How does this work? Why is this got a? I guess the fan is what slows it down. That's what keeps it from running away. So it must. It must do pulses or something. This is some sort of a tuning cap here. And this tuning cap must uh, adjust the frequency. That would be my guess. And let's see, we got one wax cap here. It's probably got to go. And thankfully, it does have the tube in it. It should be a 30, I think. Yep, sure is. It's a 30, 30 tube. That's what was on the schematic. This looks like this wasn't very heavily used. Probably just banged around a little bit. Uh, they didn't leave the battery in it, which is a good thing. Um, I'm assuming the battery took up this whole space down here, and this uh, would be the antenna, I'm sure. So, I guess the thing to do would be to fire it up and try it. See, maybe if we can put a frequency counter on here and see what frequencies, because there's nothing in the schematic that identifies what frequency... Uh, the oscillation is for this. I, it, there's just no, not a lot of info, but there is a schematic for it. That's about it. So look at this. This is actually kind of nice. This looks like this is a plug right here, so we can unplug the uh, top from the bottom. 
that's exactly what that is. So I got to looking at this thing, trying to understand why when it's laying this way, it hangs up. And when it's on its side, it doesn't. See, it like hangs up and then turn it on its side and it doesn't. It's because the rubber has worn out that are holding the screws or the, the bolts that are coming through. There's rubber isolators. It's just turned to, to concrete. Um, this thing's pretty mint too, by the way. It's all here and it doesn't look like it's been molested or anything. It, it looks normal. Um, so it's just that stuff's just dried out. So what's happening is when it's sitting on its sitting right side up like this, the pressure is pushing down and it's preventing this. It's rubbing. So um, the way that we're going to fix that is we'll just kind of gently tighten those up. I'm I'm hoping that this comes off of here. I'm thinking that this cap probably comes off and then I can take a screw out and tighten up the screws, but I don't want to ruin it. So let me take a look at this. Oh, well. Well, okay. Well, it's just that easy then. Okay, so that unscrews. That's kind of nice. It's not snapped in or anything. This is kind of like that uh, tenite plastic. You know, it's just warping from age. I think Philco used that actually on a lot of bezels and stuff, and it degrades with age. Um, so we'll take these three screws out, and then we'll tighten this up. So totally didn't need to fix that first, but, you know, I saw a squirrel. So now it's... Can you imagine that? I want to change stations. Let's go to WGY. I mean, that's painful. Let me go loud. A little louder. I mean, can you imagine the pain? I mean, it's bad enough with the wheel on here, but this is... What a gimmick. What a, what a joke. I mean, I guess it looks good next to your telephone, but whatever. Anyways, let's start uh, taking a look at uh, what the filament, where the filament voltage is and where the plate voltage needs to be here. Uh, the worst thing that I could do would be to put plate voltage on the filament in here. That would be bad. So I've just about got this figured out here. And the only thing I'm trying to figure out, I was, I was looking at the schematic and I realized that the filament for this is only active when this is switched. Now, I quite haven't quite figured it out. This is across the filament right now. And if I trigger it, you see it, it closes. Now, I thought maybe this was some sort of a switch here, but it's not not doing anything so I'm not quite sure it seems like you gotta hold it in one position to get the filament warm okay so I think I got this work worked out here I mean I still don't understand why I can't lock the filament on it only I'm gonna have to figure that I can't imagine that the only way that, that filament turns on is is by triggering it triggering the, the dial um, I just this doesn't make sense to me I should be able to lock that on and because it's the filament's going to take time to warm up so anyways let, know, let's try it so I plugged in the radio um, I don't expect this to work it's just very unlikely that it's going to do anything but I do have the radio powered up uh, let's dial this thing up to 45 volts All right, that's 45 volts DC. It's definitely transmitting because you can see the pulses. So you can see the current. I wonder if the radio's got to be like in. I wonder if the radio's got to be on. Well, let's find out. It shouldn't be. I think this thing's got some sort of a standby, but I don't know. We'll find out here. Oh, you know what? This has a remote. It's got to be in remote mode. Let's leave that in remote. That's what that's what you have to do. Oh, 
I don't expect this to work. I would think it even a three volt tube would be getting warm. I'm not. Let's see. Let's let it warm up for a second. Okay, so we know the filament's getting hot, and it happens immediately because it's a three volt tube. I pulled it out and checked it, but yeah, it's pulling like almost a hundred milliamps out of the battery. So we know that this is working. It's obviously transmitting something. I don't know if that's the right current or not, but. It's definitely sending out pulses. So, you know, is the question, is this working? Is this sending out the, the pulses that it's supposed to? And this just isn't working. And I've got it in remote, you know, and no response. Nobody home. So, uh, I'm going to assume that this is working. So maybe we'll troubleshoot it from the radio side uh, check and see why the remote is not working the remote function is not working over here so I did find remote mode so I, and I started tweaking with the oscillator uh, tuning caps back here so this is the antenna trimmer and the oscillator trimmers for all the presets so this is basically like tuning for specific parts of the band so I did get it into remote mode this is broadcast and there's remote. And it's pretty finicky. So now I can't get it back. There it is. So the problem could be in that switch. And I also noticed too when I was back here screwing with this, something's shorted. Because the volume comes up when I do that. You probably can't hear it. But it's definitely not having any interaction with the radio. So something's still bad. Ultimately, what I need to do is take the chassis out of this thing so we can troubleshoot it. I, I'm certain it's, well, I'm not certain. I mean, who knows? It could be anything here. I don't know who's played with what on here. I don't know about this. I don't know about this trimmer that's on here. I have to look at that. I, who knows? It, it could be this. It could be that. It's, this is going to be a hard one to fix. This is going to be really hard to fix. Listen to all this political talk crap. It's all conservative radio, huh? There's some liberal radio, too, I guess. Did I lose track of where I was? Am I on six or five? I think I lost track. Let's see. So we're just fig figuring out how this whole thing works. There's two solenoids in here, and they work in conjunction. This one... I don't know what to call them yet, but if you engage this one and this one at the same time, it'll run the it'll run this uh, stepper motor forward. And if well, actually, if you do it twice, it takes the volume down. If you do it once, it takes the volume up, which explains the pulse here. So it doesn't work yet. We'll figure it out, but. That explains why when I go loud, I get two pulses. Two pulses is going to make it go up. If I go soft, what was that, three or four? Soft is one, two, three. Yep, that makes sense. So that directly corresponds to this, and I can't do it. I really should get a tripod. 
but if I engage this solenoid, which is close to some contact or something, and I engage this, it ratchets two times and three times to, to change the volume. So there's probably, somebody probably knows exactly how this thing works, especially the folks that watch Shango's videos. Um, there's guys that have restored these, I know, but I'm figuring it out, and it's kind of fun to do that. Um, it's, and then I, I'm not quite sure if this ratchet mechanism isn't working right, because if I try and operate it manually the way that I would suspect that it would work with the remote triggering it. We'll figure out why the signal's not getting there and how the contact closure works for all this and everything. I want to figure out how mechanically how this works so I understand. But um, I, I don't know if there's something mechanically wrong with it right now because it's not ratcheting the way that it's supposed to. Now, it was kind of froze up. I sprayed it. I sprayed the contacts and everything. That got the tuner working. As you can see, I'm able to dial in the... I'm able to dial in each oscillator and antenna trimmer, which it actually hauls the stations in. It's working better with the presets than it is with the tuning, uh, the regular manual tuning, which means there's probably something going on over here. There might be, who knows, there could be something going on with the trimmer caps or wiring or who knows. I'm, I'm not sure. But this these preset tuners, which basically take this out of circuit and it just uses the preset oscillator coil and trimmer puts each one of those in circuit uh, this works pretty darn well and, and as you can see i can dial the trimmers up and it works really good so anyways we're just figuring this out you know I, you can see if i trigger this here this will release it so that just went back to the first channel and the lights are working now the rest of them, one of them has a ground wire on it and I, the rest are distributed through the bezel and they're all not working right now because the bezel is not on it. If I hooked the bezel up, it would work. So anyways, what I'm doing is I'm just adjusting it so that I know that there's a station on every single one of these. And uh, then I'll figure out, i got to play with this a little bit more up here and see how this works and what sequence, you know, if it's this one, then this one, or this one, then this one, or, you know, I'm sure that there's a sequence that has to happen because you, you've really only got two mechanical actuators to make it go up and down so I gotta figure this out okay so the Thyrotron the 2A4 G which I think there's a 2A4 as well that would work um, the filaments open so it's dead that's part of the reason I don't think that's everything that's wrong with it based on what I'm seeing I was I still got to look at this a little bit more, but I was looking at the grid voltage and it doesn't look like it's varying when I trigger the remote. So who knows if it's receiving or not. You know, there's so many things that could be wrong with this thing at the same time, as gimmicky as it is. So I've just got to spend some more time with it, but I really need to get another tube in there because I, I know that it's not working. And uh, who knows, maybe there's something I'm not seeing where if that tube is working, then uh, maybe it will work. Cool. Okay, so I had to order a Thyrotron for it, and we're making a little bit of progress. So if I come in here where it comes in the antenna into the control amp, I guess, converter amp, I don't know. Uh, it's the first amplifier. And uh, if I wind up the... Let's see if I can do this while I'm... So keep your eye on the signal here, and you'll see the amplitude changing. I don't know if that showed up on the video or not, but it is the signal is hitting it. I gotta move quickly to get over. Try that one more time. I'm trying to move the probe and do this all at the same time. Anyways, it's changing the amplitude because I don't understand exactly how this works. Normally, you know, if this was a intermediate frequency, I'd be able to troubleshoot it because I know what I'm looking for. I don't know what I'm looking for, and there's no explanation of how this works. It looks sort of like an IF, but anyways, that is the control. Well, let's see, that's the grid here, so maybe I need to look at the cathode voltage when it does that. Uh, but this is, it's one of the control, it's a screen maybe, 
And it comes off of the IF, which is another weird thing. Uh, oh, you know what? No, it's B+. Plus. That's what it looks like. It's one of the B-plus rails. So let, me, let me check the cathode maybe when I do that. So, like I said, it's open. And, like, completely open. So, get that out of the way. I started looking at this circuit, and I think if this filament is open, I'm going to guess that some of this stuff's not going to work right. I mean, there's some, I don't know if this is some kind of a, a regulating circuit for this or feedback circuit. I'm not sure. But at any rate, if this filament's open, that could very well be why this isn't working. So without understanding completely how this works, it looks like it's got like a 60 hertz carrier frequency, or not, not a carrier frequency, but like almost like an IF frequency. Um, and it definitely changes the amplitude as that remote pulses. So I'm going to guess without having this thyrotron, you know, being, being bad here, that's probably why it's not working. So I ordered one and, uh, you know, we'll pick this back up when it comes. So while we're waiting for the Thyrotron, I started thinking about this a little bit. And uh, I was like, you know, if the filament's open, maybe I can tap on it. And, oh, yep, do you hear it? You probably can't hear it. Maybe I need to turn the microphone around. But as I tap the tube and I don't want to break it so I'm not tapping it very hard the solenoids are engaging let me see if I can get around to that side and look what showed up today This is not the right box for this. At least I don't think it is. Continental. Never heard of it. But chances are it was made by one of the big three or four tube manufacturers. This does say Continental on the side. Maybe that is the box that it came in. Oh yeah, 2A4. 2A4G. That's it. All right, the non-blown up tube is, at least we assume it's good. You never know when you buy stuff off of eBay. It is installed. Let's give it some juice. Hey, I heard it do something. So on power up immediately, it definitely engaged something. Something engaged and then it disengaged. So I wonder what that's. Now it's on uh, LA Oldies. I think that's where I left it. So let's fire this bad boy up. Well, something triggered the Thyrotron and now the volume turned all the way up. So something's. I imagine there's probably a shorted cap in here or something making it do some weird stuff. Let's see if I can override it. Yeah, I can override it, but only temporarily, so let's turn it off and turn it back on. Let's see if that resets it. Nope. Yeah, something biased this tube on. Yeah, it's getting warm. It's not hot, but it's getting warm. So there's probably something going on in here. Now that the tube is working like it's supposed to, we're going to have to start checking voltages. So there's definitely going something going on with this circuit. I've I've got to figure the rest of it out now that I know the thyrotron's working. But check this out. This is just the capacitance of my hand on and that's why that tube is shielded. That's though they have a tube shield on here. Check this out. Just the capacitance of my hand will trigger that thyrotron. That's how sensitive it is. See? So and now it'll only go one way, which is interesting. I wonder what controls. Now that that only triggers one direction. That can only trigger one direction. So I, I've got to figure out how that resets. Check this out. 
all I had to do was I triggered it and I adjusted the the tuning cap on here. I heard something pull in as soon as that energized. Now it's it's weird because it's like rocking back and forth, but that might just be the position that I have it in. So let's see, this should go. That was two bumps of something. That was three. So it's receiving. It's receiving. We got it. We got it doing stuff. This is exciting. So I'm just curious if I've got this thing set up wrong over here, the mechanically, to see what it's doing. Let me figure that out. But it's definitely triggering. Now this should be louder. So I don't know. It's, it's definitely seeing the pulses. Let me figure this thing out. So from what I can tell here, there's a leaky cap because something's leaking in the circuit to keep this solenoid energized when it's not supposed to be because mechanically it's working like it's supposed to. So if I go to loud, it engages and goes to loud. I go to soft and what happens is it doesn't release the first solenoid, which is the volume. So click one is volume up, click two is volume down. Click three engages the mechanism to allow this to move with the second solenoid. So it's like a three cam kind of a deal, volume up, volume down, and then channel enable change. Uh, so uh, what's happening is we take a look at it here. Nothing should be engaged right now. And this solenoid is, see, something's leaking and it's, it's not binding mechanically. Right, when it's off, it doesn't do it. So we got a bad cap in this circuit and I'm very suspicious of this 10 microfarad right here. I need to find this, which, uh, well, let's see. I think we looked at this earlier in this video. It was a few days ago for me. So, and I think it comes out of here. It goes in. So it's this cap right here. I don't think that this guy was bad, but you know, if this is, if this is shorted or leaky, this, this cap right here, um, that could very well uh, have an effect on this because it's back feeding, I would guess. There shouldn't be any DC voltage feeding through here. And I bet, I wonder, I'm wondering if this cap went and shorted on us. I think we have it working. So what I figured out was for whatever reason, I don't know if there's residual polarization. That might be what it is in the solenoid. It's just enough to hold this. Now, I said before that it was not uh, electrical and that it, or well, I thought that it was electrical, that it was holding a charge, but I turned the power off and it stayed in that position, which told me that it was some sort of charge because once I'd release it, once I would move this back and release it, it would, it would stay released and I could move it back and forth and it wouldn't stick. So I noticed that this, and remember, there's no manual for this, so I got to assume what, what is supposed to be going on here. I noticed that there's this adjustment right here, and it'll move this screw out up against the core of the solenoid right there, okay? So all I did was just adjust that just a little bit. I did a little 3 16 wrench in here and adjust that out just so it gave a little bit more pressure when it was releasing, so it wasn't... It didn't have the plate flat against the the stator of the or the core or the stator of the solenoid. It was resting on the tip, just the very tip of that screw. And now this is moving it louder. Can you imagine this? I mean, I want to make it louder. This is well, actually it's already loud. There's something shorted here. I've got a, there's other, this thing's got a host issues. It's a freaking basket case as far as other problems, but getting this remote unit, that's what this is about is getting this remote unit working. So now let's see, I haven't even tried this yet. Let's try to go to a different station here. So that should be tuning it to a different station and it doesn't appear to be. That, now it didn't respond at all. Oh, you know what? I might have lost yeah, my jerry rig garbage here is not the battery for the filament on this is not staying on. Hang on. 
Yeah, this thing's more Mickey Mouse than Disneyland. It's a wonder it works at all. So let's see. There we go. So that is going to a preset now. Let's see. Let's go back. Let's see if we can go back to K Mozart, which I think is this one. Nope, I was off. Maybe it's this one. Nope. Yeah, something might not still be working right here, but this is releasing now. That's the important part. Let's see, that should be softer. That's KABC 790. So that would be one of the lower, maybe number three. What? Oh, got the mask mandates coming back. Let's see here. You know what's going on is I think the contacts, although I cleaned them, something something's going on. This this thing is Mickey Mouse. I mean, even as designed, I'm sure that this thing didn't work worth a damn because you have contacts in there. Now remember this circuit. This circuit is picofarad capacitive, se uh, sensitive, right? Okay. We got well, we got loose wires here too. So it's interesting. Well, anyway, something shorted in here, but this is very sensitive to capacitance. Those contacts in there are what are linking these cores and the and the well the cores down here for the tuning and the and the antenna trimmers. They're all getting put in circuit by that by that whatever you want to call it that wafer automated wafer switch or whatever the hell it is. It, the capacitance can change depending on how dirty or not it is. Now I cleaned it and I wiped them off as good as I could, but it's not working great. So, you know, that there, it's not going to be consistent already. So, you know, I just kind of assume this thing is going to work like crap, but you know, this was really about, can I get this to work again? And really we, we were able to troubleshoot it. We were able to see that it was the, um, the thyrotron. See how sensitive that is? And maybe that's the problem. Maybe I need to just put the tube shield back on it. I mean, that could be part of it. Put the tube shield on there. Maybe that's... At any rate, this thing's Mickey Mouse. It's just, it's it's a joke. It's, it's a novelty. I'm sure it was very cool. It was very expensive. It's the hog's power. You know, it... I'll get it to work, but it's not going to work consistently. I bet that this probably never worked consistently, but it does work. So I'm pretty pretty happy with the fact that we were able to get the thing going. So at any rate, um, maybe uh, in another video uh, when this ends up going to its new owner, um, we'll do a, a real, well, we won't call it a restore, but we'll do a recap on it properly replace uh, all the components that need to be replaced you know get it properly serviced um, replace a bunch of wire there's a lot of wire and this has got to be replaced so maybe we'll do that in the future but this was uh, fun just to try and see if we could get the thing working and it does in fact it does in fact work so there you have it 1940 Philco wireless remote Who'da, that was must have been really something back in its day and just a quick note, I think I got it working right here. I had screwed that out. That That is very sensitive, that screw adjustment on this solenoid. I had screwed it out too far, what was happening. And I bet if you go back and look in the video, it's, it's in there. While this was engaging, that was disengaging because it didn't have enough pressure to hold it. There was, the, the force wasn't 
the because the plate wasn't close enough to the stator, it was releasing and that was screwing up where it was at. Now I've got it where see it stays engaged. So this should go back to K Mozart. Yep, right back to K Mozart. So I think we got it working. It's still gimmicky as all hell, but you know we got it working. Here's a little Thyrotron action for you, too. That's right, it's filled with argon, so it, it glows purple. <laughs>